Hello everyone, my name is Aben, and I will be a host for this particular project. In this day and age, traveling has become ubiquitous. Travel via air is becoming more and more common and getting more popular than what it was a decade ago. A contributing factor to this affordability of airfares, airfares could be increased competition amongst the airlines, increased individual and or household wages, and perhaps even a paradigm shift towards saving time with a trade-off of a little extra cost of traveling via air. Today we will be discussing about this particular project. This project is dealing with where you, as a data scientist, will have to predict the price of an airline ticket based on several factors. So let me introduce you to the data set that we will be, dis uh, we will be dealing with. The data set that we are going to deal with, to find the data set online, I want you to go to your favorite web browser and type in flight ticket price predictor data set. You should be able to see this particular link and I want you to click on this particular link. Now, to make sure that you're, uh, you're downloading the correct uh, data set, make sure that your data set is named data underscore train dot xlsx, that is, it's an Excel uh, file, and make sure Please make sure that it has 10,683 rows and about 11 columns. Once you download this data set, this, your data set will look something like this. As you can see, this is a huge data set and perhaps not the best way to look at it. So let me tell you how we are going to deal with our entire project. First, we will be, this is the agenda by the way. I've divided this entire project into three parts. Part one is your business problem. And here we will be discussing the business problem. We will import the data set and we will explore the data set at a little bit. Part two will be dealing with uh, expert data analysis or the EDA, feature engineering and doing some analytics. Here we will try to explore, we will try to get into the data set and we will try to determine which all factors contribute in predicting the price of an airline ticket. Then part three, we will be building the machine learning model and then we will validate the model. And thus we will try to finish this entire thing off. So let's start a journey with the simple business statement. So as you could imagine, it's not a huge thing, right? So we have to predict the flight tickets based on certain features. Now there's these features could like, there are 11 features as we can see on a data set. In a data set, as you can see, there are, these are the features, airline, date of journey, source, destination, route, departure time, arrival time, destination, total uh, stops, and some additional info and price. Here we will have to predict the price. So price will be a target variable and the rest will be the predictive variables. So this is what we will be dealing with. So these these 10 from airline till additional info, these are the features which will be determining, which will be helping us to determine the price of an airline. Right. So over here, let's look at the methodology. This is the methodology that I will uh, try to, uh, you know, like I'll try to follow. First, we will try to study the data set. Like, what is the type of data set? What is the source of this data set? Is the source reliable? More of the note, we don't ask these questions to ourselves. But in the real world, these are imperative questions that you must be asking yourself from where is it that you're injecting the data to begin with? Fortunately for us, we don't have to worry too much about it because um, because we have been given a data set. So this really doesn't apply to us. However, I thought that it is imperative that I include this into, into our discussion. Then we will be importing the data set in a moment. And then we will do some uh, preliminary analysis, such as find, trying to find out how many rows and columns are there. As you know, we'll try to look at the column data types and make, make the plans accordingly search for missing values and duplicates and deal with missing values and duplicates appropriately. 
right? And then we will try to make some notes on how to do the ETN feature engineering in part two. So let's start a journey. I've already fired up my Jupyter Notebook. So my Jupyter Notebook is over here, right? And um, I hope it is visible to all of you, right? So first of all, I will import the necessary libraries. Now, um, I want, so again, uh, there are a lot more libraries that I will be requiring, but for the time, for the moment, I will be only re uh, importing the standard libraries. As we need more libraries, we will, uh, you know, I will try to down, you know, import and uh, if not import, like I could download them later on. So let's start a journey. I will say import numpy as np, import pandas as pd, and for visualization, I could say import uh, matplotlib, matplotlib dot pyplot as plt and maybe seaborn as well input seaborn as sns so let's execute it i'll give some time right so i want you to pay attention that my uh my uh you know the data set is in this particular uh it is located over here right so let's give it some time So in my case, in my particular case, I will be looking at data train, right? And I will be opening the file location. So let's give it some time. So I will look at the, I will, uh, I will take the, the, its path over here. So I will just copy this entire thing, right? And uh, I will say data is equal to pandas dot read underscore csv i will give in the path over here right and i will say backslash uh data underscore train dot xlsx oh my apologies it is an excel file so it has to be p uh read underscore excel right this over here will not work because uh you know it will, it will recognize to make it work we'll have to change all the backslashes to forward slashes that's what usually happen in uh, Mac or Unix based systems, but in Windows, it's backslash. Now, either you can change it, which will take usually some time, which is honestly very boring, or you can add this R command for, for, for reading purposes. Now it should be working, right? So let's execute it. And then to display uh, the first five rows, we could say uh, data.head, right? So this is our data set that's, uh, that we can see over here. Right, and over here we will try to, I will try to get some basic information to get more insights into my into my data set. Right, so how what will we what will we do? Well, we will try to find out how many rows and columns are there, what are the data types of the of the of these uh, columns, and how could we deal with it? You know, we have to make a game plan, a kind of a roadmap, so that you know we don't uh, we are so that we could be reassured to us, or we could be confirmed uh, that we are indeed on the right path, and hopefully not a, a hit a dead end. So you could say data dot info, sorry info method. It will give you some analysis. So let me zoom in over here. So it is giving you a brief, kind of a brief summary, as you can see. So it is telling us what uh, basic information about all the columns. So it is telling us, okay, so we know that in our data, there are 10,683, uh, you know, um, uh, data points or rows so airline is having all of them then uh, no th like all of them are non null so there are no missing values in airline and it is of object data type only price is integer or numeric data type the rest are all object data type right fair enough so uh, we will try to you know uh, look at like let's try to explore a bit more so you could say data dot uh, shape like to find out how many rows and cons we already know the answer to this but you know just to get some idea over here Right, then we will try to use the count function again. So just a little bit, just to be sure. Okay, now over here, we could say that airline data journey source, all of them have all the rows, 10,683. However, route, route and your total stops contain 10,682 data points. One is missing. Well, now we will be dealing with that in a moment. So just to, if you want to find out the data type of uh, of all the columns, you could say 
data dot d uh, type the type attribute and it will tell you all the data type. again you could say get that you're essentially getting the same information that you would have got from info so you're breaking down the info function over here now to get a statistic, statistical summary i'm sorry about that to get a statistical summary of numeric columns you will apply the data uh, the, the describe method so you would say data dot describe method now by definition it will provide you the statistical summary of numeric columns only the reason being, you could only do statistics on numbers. Anything apart from numbers, you can't do statistics. Like you can't apply any. You can't find out the mean, the the you know, oh, let's say the 50th percentile and stuff like that. It's simply not possible, right? So you will. So this is what you want to what you want to get. So we can see the average, uh, you know, the the main value of an airline ticket in this entire data set is about 9,087 9, rupees and the median value is about 8,372 rupees while this maximum has gone to almost 80,000 rupees and the lowest the the smallest value is about 1,759 rupees so we can guess we can already guess that uh, you know it, you know the maximum value could be uh, you know either an international flight or uh, it would be maybe an uh, you know um, a business class or first class uh, flight that person may have booked. Again, these things. Now we will be trying to dealing with missing values, right? So that is the first step. So we will say to find to uh, to define the missing values. We will say data dot is na or is null. Both of them are fine. So you could say something like. You know, uh, you could you could have used data dot is null also. Sorry, is a null. Both of them would have work absolutely fine. So this would give you a boolean value, right? So here it's ex extremely difficult to find out to drill down to the the missing value. So what we would do is we will add an additional method over here. We will say dot sum method over here. This will try to give us. Uh, with, you know how many uh, missing values are there, and in if they are present, if they are present, in which column or columns they are present. Turns out there are only two missing values, in route and in total stops. Well, hmm. Well, let's try to filter those uh, those data points or rows where uh, where total stops and uh, your route are missing. For that, we will have to write a conditional statement. That's where your pandas come into the picture. You know, you don't have to write any Pythonic uh, jargon, like you don't have to do any for loop or anything like that. You simply say, data, this is my data frame. Inside the square bracket, you will have to write a conditional value, right? And the conditional value is that I'm saying that, you know what, drill down to route, route, right? And fetch me all those rows wherever this it has not available right it, it, wherever the value is null right or or given a pi value say the same thing but this time make sure fetch all the values fetch all the rows where you where total stops are missing right so say dot is na or is na or is null whatever you do it right so you would get something like if you were to execute, you would get something like this thing. So as you can see, there's only one data point which is missing. So I was scared, like, you know, I was under the impression that maybe there are two different data points, but turns out that uh, the data point at the index 9039 is missing both the source, sorry, not the source, uh, the route and the, the total stop. So as you can see, route is missing, NAN, right? And so is your total stop, right? So now comes the part, how do we deal with that? Well, that is the interesting part. There are two ways of dealing with missing values. A, you can edit them. B, you can omit them. Now, editing would require you to, like usually people uh, say, people might be saying, you know what, if you want to edit them, you may want to fill the missing value with, uh, let's say some average value. But I don't say that. I always say that try to do, go with the, the, the domain knowledge. But unfortunately, we don't, we're not in the airline industry and we don't know, uh, you know, have, we don't have sufficient domain knowledge. Plus, uh, to do it with any statistical inference, like to find it, find, uh, you know, find a constant value to fill it in, 
it will be difficult you know it is going to take too much time and i guess to simply get rid of this particular data point is going to be much easier for us you know i mean losing one data point out of 10683 is not going to make much of a difference uh, you know and it's very simple to do that so i would rather go with that particular approach for that i will say data excuse me oh apologies for that let me remove this particular cell yeah so i would say something like data dot drop na right now if i were to only do this thing it will drop it but it won't it will drop this particular uh data point where there is a missing value not available however it will not make the changes permanent to make the changes permanent i will have to say in place sorry i will have to say in place is equal to true something like this right now this has been executed now if i were to say data dot is na dot sum it should be give it should be giving me zero so there are no missing values over here and if i were to find out how many of them are there like or the total count so i will get something like this thing so all of them are having 10682 values we have deleted it right it was a fair approach and i guess uh, the right thing to do over here so we have done some preliminary analysis we have dealt with the missing values in the next uh, video, we will be doing some EDA and feature engineering, which is going to be the toughest part and the most interesting part, if you'd ask me. Right? So, till next time, cheers.